guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you smash that subscribe button, give this video a like, and make friends in the comment section. We're here at Turbury Isle with Trevor Salzman. Gonna go through another video, kind of more technical side of things, going through the short game this time. So it's gonna be awesome. Trevor, I'm excited to be here, excited to have you here, and uh, let's get things going. When we go into this shot right here, I think one of the most important aspects for players to understand from a contact perspective is setup. So what I see way too many people do is so they hinge again from their pelvis, they lower here, they grip down on the club. And the reason people do that is because I think they're trying to get close to the golf ball because they feel like they're going to make better contact doing that. Mm. But the problem is when they get down here like this, so if I went down here and I swung it back this far, and let's say I didn't have any release and all I did is turn, I'm going to hit the ground right there. Yeah. So now when, when we realize that we're going to hit the ground, this is where I start to see people, they either stand up, they pull and they're all doing that. I'd say most miss hits in short game come from somebody trying not to chunk it. Yep. And that's where the thin shots come in, the chunks come in, mm -hmm. skulls, whatever it might be. So when I'm hitting this shot, I'm really getting, like if I was standing straight up and down, you'll see I've got my median line right here. I'm not moving very far away from the median line. So I've got the handle of the club. I like to point that typically right about where my belt buckle is. That's, so from here, if I swung this back halfway, Let's say I released it this much. This club is still going to bottom out right where the golf ball is, so I can still make good contact. It's boring that I don't have any up and down right there. Yeah. yeah. So this is what now gives players the ability to swing the club. So when they're creating speed, yeah. Then you're creating spin. You're also you have the ability to access the bounce, and you're going to access more loft in that regard as well. I really feel like when I'm chipping my best, I um, make sure that I use the bounce quite a bit. And the way I do that is I don't try to pull my handle, the handle through the golf ball. I just let the head almost hit the golf ball on its own. So I let the weight of the club kind of take over and just use the loft that the club gives me to, to be able to control shots around the greens. Always remember that. Bounce is your friend. One of my favorite things that I'll do, is just as a feel for like what you were saying, Ram, about accessing the bounce, mm -hmm. is I'll take the club, I'll put this literally right in my belly button here, I'd say, okay, if I swing this back, I need this to return to that point. Yeah. That's, that's my funny. favorite, that's my favorite feel yeah. in the world right there. So I'll take my normal setup, swing it back. If I pull, this is gonna be in front of me and it's never gonna return to me, guys. Yeah. So now in order for me to get down to the ball, that's where I have to start changing my posture, if that makes sense. So right. I just do a lot of feels where I'm going this way. So I, I can hinge it, I can no hinge it, and I just return that right back to the center of me. What you're saying is kind of, um, Stand a little taller, yep. stand a little closer, have that handle a little bit up. Yep. And what that does too, guys, is that like, kind of like gets rid of the heel of, uh, of the club and it's really good around this kind of area. We have Bermuda grass in Florida here and the biggest like indicator for like those chunk shots that you see into the grain is because the heel kind of gets a little low and that catches first, which closes the club face, causing that big chunk. So having the handle a little higher kind of gets rid of that sole that you're gonna come in contact with the ground, so you're able to kind of just get through the grass a little bit easier with uh, way less effort, right? You couldn't, you couldn't have explained it better. Like, well, let's hit some shots. Here, I'd be pretty tall at setup. This is right here. I'll just be hitting the shot, I guess. I don't know how I get most of my shots like right that. This is like a medium trajectory. Yeah, that's, just my, that's what I would call my stock trajectory. Stock right trajectory, there. okay. Yep, that would be more of a stock trajectory right so, there. So you're still feeling that wrist hinge, even though this is a pitch shot right here. Like it's not necessarily, we're not trying to create that normal golf swing feel. We're still feeling that uh, supple of the wrist yep. in, in our heads in order to feel the weight of the head, in order to kind of time everything back up. And just feeling a little bit extra, that you're kind of being patient with the body here. And just letting the club head catch up by releasing it to the golf ball to where you were exactly at its dress. is kind of like where you're talking about in that belly button position there. Yep. And just kind of letting the loft do the work for you and the grooves do the work for you to create spin. So, so the way I like to do it, honestly, is like if I'm hitting a low one at the butt of the club in the same position, and if I hit a high, I just open it, yep. just move the, the ball pretty far forward and have the butt of the club in the same exact position. That way, Spot on. my hands are in the same position regardless of what shot I'm hitting, and I'm able to kind of produce the same swing on almost on it. I don't have to manipulate anything with my body, and that way it's just eliminating another extra variable to where I could just be a lot more consistent around the green. All right, you guys, now we're in the bunker. I got my really, really douchebag looking glasses on because <laughs> this uh, sand is really bright. So I mean, you can honestly approach this a couple ways. You could like, kind of fat it out of this bunker and just kind of barely land it on, have it roll up to the fin. 
or we can be sexy and just kind of have those nice little high spinners that we kind of look, like to look at. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grip the face open, yeah. uh, and then I'm going to go super strong with my lead hand, my mm. left hand for a right-hander, right hand for a left-hander. And I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to go crazy weak on top of it. Yeah. And so what this does, one, this allows me to access speed, but as I'm accessing speed from my right side as I'm throwing it, yeah. It's keeping the loft on the club and it's keeping the bounce more engaged. Mm -hmm. So this golf club's not gonna dig very much. That's the number one thing I'd say I see in bunker shots is players are afraid to commit to speed. The second piece of it, I almost don't think players ever remotely reach how wide they could be in their setup to where they have to where they have stability. Like I'm always gonna get my feet down here. It's one of the things I heard from Seve is they said like you could never actually put your feet as wide as what Seve did inside of the bunkers like he was doing like he was doing the splits right there. Yeah, he almost has his front toe like facing towards the target sometimes. You know? 100%. Get the hips to the ball easier. So that's what's gonna that's what's gonna get us lowered to the ball. Now from here, same type of thing. I'm gonna bring the buttons on my shirt right towards the back of the golf ball. That'll okay. be the, that'll be the next piece right there. And I'm gonna do it to where my shoulders are in line with whatever the slope is that I have. If I'm on a down slope, I'm gonna have them down a little bit. If yeah. I'm on an up slope, I'm gonna have them up a little bit. And that's just so that I can get the club into the sand and out of the sand as fast as possible so there's not as much turf interaction or sand interaction when we're trying to hit a spinner like that. Yeah. That would be how I'd hit yeah. that shot right there. Right? You're just trying to really feel like you're releasing it down into the golf ball, right? And yeah. just kind of letting your uh, turn by the speed it's like what i what i like to feel as well as i like to feel like really dead yep. arms and i and i make sure i open my club face and the backswing there a little bit create yep. a little bit more dish yep and i feel like they just my arms just drop and as soon as they drop my chest just turns to the golf ball bingo and that's what creates that slap on the bottom 100 percent. i couldn't agree with you more yeah so kind of like like this arms crossed over there handle a little further back Got, uh, you got the bunker shot down fucking pat, buddy. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, I, so my college yeah. coach, that's the only thing that he actually taught me. That <laughs> actually, and I would, I would tell you to explain this like to, to your viewers that you have, is get them to feel like, that. remember, the arms can drop, but the hands can still create speed. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, that's, that's what they do, too. Like, that's that's why I it's got to be a lot more. It's got, it. yeah. mm -hmm, it's more of a, it's more of a wrist action right there as you get in there. So you're getting your wrist to move Woo. here. Uh, but what you're not doing is you're you're not accessing any pull with what your arms are doing. Right. And so like that's where like that was filthy how you hit that one. Right. By the green so we could get a couple of videos up. Wow. <laughs> that is filthy, dude. <laughs> that is filthy. I almost like pretend like there's a string right here. Now you try to keep the club head. It feels like it's outside of the string, but it might look just normal. Yeah. And I honestly like hit it like a bunker shot to where I kind of uh, hinge my wrists up like this. Yeah. And it just kind of like release everything and just finish. So it's where a, the almost 100% like, like your bunker yeah, shot. Yeah, like a bunker shot. You just hit closer to the ball. Close to the ball, put a little bit more weight in my front foot, handle a little bit lower. pretty good spinner right there. Now, a lot of times what I will do is I'll go 10 finger grip. Oh, so, 10 finger. And the reason I'll go 10 finger grip is so that I have more access to this. Mm. So I have more access to getting my to right, right side moving, yeah. which is actually going to involve more of the bounce, bounce versus what I see a lot of people do is they pull this this way. And a lot yeah. of times when they pull, then it comes outside. And now all of a sudden the face is looking down like this. And that's where they, that's where they hit them heavy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think like the biggest reason why people pull it's because they think that they need like lag in order to create a decent angle to the golf ball. Couldn't but agree more. Rather than just like kind of getting that wide feeling almost like you're almost casting it and letting the loft do the work. So like with this shot, like to your point there, Rem, is like I, I picture like if this is a paintbrush, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm painting my arc back here and I'm trying to repaint the exact same arc on the way down mm -hmm. so that this club is always staying consistent on the way back, on the way through. And in theory, I'm always going to have the same low point. So I'm going to start in the same place that I create impact. I honestly like 
you know, when after like maybe you have a long night or something, you're a little hungover, you don't feel the way of the club head a little bit. I like to honestly <laughs> uh, take the pinky off of the left hand, you know, and you feel that club head a little bit easier. You feel the weight a little bit easier in the club, and that's that's when you're able to kind of release it a lot, like quicker. I guess. It's funny you say that. <laughs> like I actually like to feel. Like a lot of times with these shots, like I have the club oh, right in really? there and it, and it feels like it's a lever. It yeah. feels like this is a lever that it's just kind of rebounding off a big advocate of gripping way down on these shots. Because yeah. the more I grip down, the less speed I can create, yeah. shortens the golf club. I think it just becomes a lot harder for most players. I think that's one of the yeah. biggest, one of the biggest things in short game is taught, hey, you've got to grip down in order to create good contact. But now the more and more and more I get my spine down here, I lose access to what my rotation is. Yeah. And, and then it just becomes arm dominant. And it's all circumstantial, right? Like, obviously, like, or what I think, obviously, is, like, if you have, like, really thick rough, yeah. maybe you would want to grip down just to create that extra mm -hmm. strength and where you're able to kind of put it steeper. on the steeper. steeper. Yeah. yeah, you're not coming as shallow. Maybe that's the reason why. And just as a player, that's what I would naturally do. And I don't really think of, like, why I do it, but yeah. you just kind of do it just because you've been in those situations long enough. And that makes sense because when you're in the rough and the golf ball sitting down, we'll do a segment on this. When you're in yeah. the golf ball and the golf ball sitting down, you don't want as wide of an arc. You want more yeah. of a narrow V-shaped v, arc. Yeah. So that's where that would actually start to make sense because yeah. you're going to take some of the you're going to take some of the rough out of play when you're when you're swinging the club down into it. Yeah, cool. So I really love that visual. You, you almost alluded to it there. It's like in this sort of situation, it's like a really wide, almost like a U, like a skate ramp view. Like really, like the bottom is really wide. And the top is kind of narrow right here because we don't have that long of a swing. And when you're out of the rough, it's almost like a V-shape to where you're kind of coming more of it and a, a descending angle to the golf ball. The ang angle of attack is higher. So you're creating that ball contact first and exposing less of the bounce, trying to get that lean edge to dig a little bit more. Rather than here, we're trying to expose that bounce more and just coming into it a lot more shallow here. So this is really hard to spin on the screen. Oh my goodness. You can just hear that though. Yeah, that one's spinning. You can just hear that. I'm going to explain one other thing right here if you're cool with this. Yeah, go okay. for it. So like my left hand, what I view this as, this is a break. Okay? My right side's an accelerator. Mm. Okay? So I'm basically, I'm trying to swing this golf club to my break right there. Does that make sense? So it's mm. like I'm trying to swing this to my break. So that's what allows me to create more speed. But the faster that I can decelerate it, the more yeah. consistent I'm going to be. Versus if I'm in here and I'm in flexion, I'm pulling there's nothing to decelerate that club and so a lot of times players mass will continue going this way and that's when their low point changes yeah so I view the right side as my accelerator and the left side is my brake that's what's slowing it down so I'd be going right side is here and I'd be swinging that to what my brake is mm. right there Does that makes sense so it's yeah. almost like this left hand could almost stay in its place right here like I could hit lob shots here really not accessing a yeah. whole lot of backswing using this more as a break yeah. and using my right side as an accelerator. That's all you're feeling the wrist, right? And then we just add a little turn there. That's what creates that nice little action that you see us hitting right now, so. Bingo. Okay, so let me try that a little bit. I'll try one more. Right side gas, left side break. Yeah. Nice turn. There you go. That's right there. Ooh, that was filthy. Do it. Ooh. Do it. Oh. So you adopt these things in your game, guys, and you might hit golf shots like that. Who knows? Uh, thank you, Trevor. This was awesome. We're going to move on to a couple more shots around the green here. Before you forget, make sure you smash that subscribe button, like this video, and make friends in the comments. And let me know if you like this video or not. Just leave a thumbs up, and I'll go ahead and I'll engage in conversation with you there. So uh, let's move on. Like, I could literally, I could go here. So I'm going to pancake this thing wide open. Yeah. And what I'm gonna feel is, so my face is wide open right here, but what I'm gonna try and do is I'm actually trying to almost get the leading edge back around a square. And what that's doing, that's mowing down the grass behind it, and it helps me a lot more with, with contact right here to where the shot becomes more predictable. Jeez. That's where I can hit those shots a heck of a lot easier out of that crazy, crazy, crazy crappy grass. Around The face is coming around this way. Yep, so you're trying to get the you're trying to get the leading edge back around. It's coming around like that. There you're you mowing go. Mowing it with the heel and then just squaring it back out with the... So the reason why the shot becomes so solid is now you've got the leading edge that's mowing the grass down. You still have your bounce engaged, but now you've got surface behind it that back weights the hit, plus you have loft. It becomes a lot more predictable, especially out of this tough shot where we're short-sided downhill. So nice, firm. dude. 
That's so easy because I feel like I'm not even trying to get to the grass. Instead like, of making doing all the work for me. Exactly. Imagine if I'm right here, the heel's winning to start, yeah. and I'm trying to get the toe to catch up to it. Mm. So I'm just trying to let the toe catch up to it, where this would still be here, the mm. toe's catching up. Do it. Now you got Do predictability. It. Do it. Oh, I broke to the right at the end. Are you kidding me? All right, so what do we got here, Trevor? So we're going uphill, tight lie, short-sided, downhill. I think this is a shot that... You got all either, that? All right. <laughs> I think this is a shot that I see a lot of players, they think their best option is to putt it, which I will tell you that's still always a good option because yeah. your putter is going to be your most, most consistent club in your bag. Yeah. You're going to have the same launch every time. You're going to have the same mm -hmm. ball speed mostly every time. It's going to roll quickly. So it's not saying that putting's a bad option, but if you wanted to chip it, you want to try and make it, this is how we would do it. Like obviously you could put this, but if you're like a player and you want to have a, more of an opportunity to make this sort of shot, your wedge is your best friend here. Because what you're going to do is you're going to eliminate all this extra shit you have to deal with. Uh, you don't have to worry about the crane, you don't have to worry about the different bounces you're going to get. If you can get really good at landing your ball in a consistent spot, um, and that you can practice landing on a towel, landing on a quarter, landing on a hat, use whatever object you can. And just to have like a visual object out there to kind of practice landing at your certain landing spot that you pick out. For me, the one thing I always try and do when I set up to these shots is I'm going to set the toe of the club more into the ground than I'm going to set the heel into the ground. Yeah. So I'll hit a lot of these shots where I actually have the heel off the ground. I have the handle standing almost straight up and down. Mm -hmm. And again, what I do is I do change my grip a little bit. I weaken it so that I can swing this back and I can keep the club face more square. Mm. A lot of times when I get my hand too strong, this wants to roll, and the last thing that I need on an uphill lie is I don't need more loft. Right. So I'm using the heel to create my loft for me. Yeah. What I like to feel is honestly, like I'm very similar to you. Yep. Because I change my grip a little bit, get a little bit less out of my fingers. I think that naturally kind of weakens it for me. Yep. Maybe. Um, a lot of players like to actually take their putting grip in areas like this. Yeah, I do that, but I don't. I don't know. I messed around with that, and I get a little tentative. Yeah. I don't know, for some reason, I can't explain it. No, I'm with you. I don't do it. I've just seen a lot of people that are very successful in, in grabbing yeah. this just like they would grab a putter where the thumbs are more on top. Uh-huh. Anyways. Yeah, so, so what you're saying is toe down, heel up a bit. So what does that do? So can you explain to everybody what actually putting the toe down does to your golf club and yeah. to your golf shot? So what I'm trying to take away is I, I never want the heel to grab. That's always my, yeah. my number one thing. I always feel like I can create better contact. If I get the toe into the ground, without it digging, that just really, really helps me out in regards to contact. As soon as the heel gets in, that's where the face flips over and the golf ball's probably gonna be chunked. Mm. And then I see that as turning into thin shots, then players, they think that they're they're chunking and closing it, so then they start trying to pull the handle forward, then we have a two-way miss, which is heavy and thin. Mm. So oh, the, the worse the lie <laughs> is, the worse the lie is, the more I'm going to put the toe into the ground. Toe into the ground. So in this circumstance, we got a little bit into the grain here, a um, little uphill lie, you want to make sure you want to have consistent contact. So toe down, heel up, yep. handle a little higher. Maybe weaken the grip if you want to. You could uh, also use your putting stroke or a putting grip also. You'd also just hold it more in the palm of your hands. Um, it's honestly personal preference. Like there's no right or wrong, wrong way. Um, it's just a matter of like trial and error. What do you, what, what feels more comfortable? What produces the best results? And then honestly, just if you can repeat that on a consistent basis, then that's the right option for you. Be creative with short game. And like, like Rem saying, is like whatever works for you, keep yeah. doing that. You gotta yeah. get really, really good at that, at those types of things. Because everybody's gonna be a little bit different. My grip's gonna be a little different than his. My loading pattern and hinge pattern's gonna be different than his and probably yours as well. And so you gotta play around with what your feels are. Use some of the basics like we've talked about and figure out what works best for you. So if I were to do this shot from face on right here, this is probably how it looked, toe down, heel up. I put a lot of weight in my front foot. And just make sure that I have those buttons pointed at the golf ball um, until I hit it. So yep. if I hit it, I could honestly let the butt of the, or the buttons kind of move with my club. 100%, almost. yep. Moving at that one-to-one -one we talked about. Yeah, that one-to-one -one ratio. All right, so go down. Mm -hmm. Pretty good right yeah, there. Yeah, good. These greens are just firm. <laughs> they were really firm. Normally, normally that would stop and spin. That would have ripped right there. This still, this still feels soft. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like trying to hold these angles here and rock in the shoulders. I kind of am, but the wrists are still supple, and I still feel like a little play in the wrist there. Like, and it still feels like for me, that I get my arms pretty involved. I think just consciously, I still feel like 
it's almost like a dead swing, and it just falls, and I kind of use my body to pivot and provide power. Yeah, I think the biggest the biggest thing that I would say that players struggle with in short game is they don't have awareness of where the, the club face is. Mm -hmm. And generally where that awareness is going to come from is from when you grip this way too tight, yeah. and now you don't have the ability to transfer energy into the golf club. Yeah. yeah and so as soon as tension, the way tension works in the way that I see it in short game, if you imagine your left arm gripping the club, this is a hose. Okay, so when this is straight lined right here, energy can flow through it. Mm. As soon as I start to grip it tight and I start to create kinks and bends like this, the same type of things happens with a hose. If I kink it, yeah. I'm gonna have pressure build up, it doesn't have anywhere to go, and that's where we have these shots that feel like they come off hard or yeah. not, they don't have really good contact because what we're not actually accessing is the ability to transfer energy, okay? Because for these, I think a lot of these shots, they just work like a pendulum. That's the way my arms mm. and hands are working with this right here. So I want to be able to feel the swing of the golf club right here. It doesn't mean you have to get super wristy like this, yeah. but I can feel the clubs rocking from my left hand back to my right, back to my left. Mm. Like that's one of my big things right there for players is get a feel of what the club's actually doing. It doesn't mean you have to have a lot of wrist hinge, but feel what the club head is doing in relation to what your hands are presenting. Make sure that you know what the golf club itself is doing. If you can't feel the golf club, you're too tense and you're probably not going to have very good feel around the greens. Yeah, one of my buddies that's on the Corn Dre Tour, shout out Stuart McDonald, um, he told me, he's like, from if there's a scale on how hard you need to grip the golf club around the greens, like one being like barely holding on to the club and 10 being like death grip, yep. you probably want to be like a two or a three. Yeah, I would, I would guarantee you I would be in the two or less. Yeah. A yeah, lot of these shots that I hit. It's I, a, yeah, it's like a really good visual just for me. Like when he told me that, I was like, wow. Like, and if you could like picture that yourself back at home, like 10 being absolute death grip, one being like it's gonna fall out of your hands. You wanna be at two or three. So that really tells you how light you actually need to grip it. Guys, if you got through this entire video, please, 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 I cannot stress this enough, smash that subscribe button, like this video, and make friends in the comments if you like this video or not, and let me know. And that way we could produce more of these videos together sure. and uh, help you guys a lot more as well. I hope you guys learned something. Even if it's just one little thing that you learned out there, super and super important and just practice it consistently over and over again. Don't give up. Thank you, Trevor Salzman. You can follow him at his ats on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Trevor Salzman Golf. We're gonna put it right here for all you to uh, click on and in the description below, you can just click on it, it's really easy. We're gonna do a lot more of these pretty soon. Absolutely. And uh, make friends in the comments and uh, see you guys next video, peace.